Hello and welcome back to A Splashy Paint, where it's time for our regular introducing feature, where we shine our creative spotlight on another great SAA professional artist. Today is the turn of versatile pencil and pastel artist, Carol Kibble. So settle back as we take a closer look at her in action. Hi, today I'm going to show you how to begin and how to complete a painting of a golden eagle. Now I'm using the SAA pastels, which I think are perfect for anyone new to pastels. They're really soft so you can blend well with them, but they're hard enough to get a line to draw with, so absolutely perfect for beginners. So I'm going to introduce you to a tool today which will ensure that your drawings are accurate before you even pick up your pastels. It's the scale finder. The scale finder is 15 centimetres by 10 centimetres, so it's designed to fit a standard photograph. So here I've actually placed it over my photograph of the golden eagle. What you then have to do is draw a grid. Now, in typical Blue Peter style, here's one I made earlier. Now, as I said, my grid was 10 centimetres by 15 centimetres. I've now decided the scale, so I've doubled everything. So as you can see now, all the details are in the right place. Now, because of the constraints today with painting this, I've moved on very rapidly, and I've already painted the basics of the eagle, but there'll be something missing, which I'm going to paint for you today. OK, so after some time, I've ended up with this. So what's missing? Now, have you ever been to a gallery and all the paintings in the gallery appear to be watching you? That's eyes well painted, so that's what we need to aim for. The first thing we need to start with is the iris, the coloured part of the eye. I like to start with a light colour and build up because eyes are always multicoloured. So here I'm going to start with a lemon yellow. Now I'm using a marl stick, and the marl stick will prevent me spoiling the work that I've already done. Now this is a lovely bright colour, but it is literally just an undercoat. Now as I say, that's the undercolour. Next I'm going to pick on another yellow, a yellow ochre. Now, the great thing with these pastels as well, the SAA pastels are easy to snap into more manageable pieces. If I tried to snap a more expensive make of pastel, I would end up with a lot of dust. But with the SAA pastels, you can snap them quite cleanly. So now I have two. OK. Now, the next colour I'm going to add is an orange. I'm actually going to focus the orange on the outer side of the iris because that's where it's deepest in tone. So again, I'm very roughly going to add this because I'm going to be blending these three colours in a second. So again, very roughly adding this. I love painting eyes because they bring any animal to life. Blending. Lots of people are a little bit afraid with blending and not sure what tools to use. The best tool to use are your fingers because you can't lose those. Or you could use a colour shaper. And again, these are really good to get into those fine detailed areas. The other thing I found are particularly useful are pieces of polystyrene packaging which are really useful for blending because they push the pigment around without taking the colour out. So I'll use my fingers initially to blend that area in. There we go. That's got a nice glow to it now. The thing I notice with a bird of prey is that if I always have a shadow at the top of the eye, the iris will take on a shadow because of the deep hood of that eye. So rather than picking on a new colour, I use the colour I've already used within the bird. So I'm using this smoke grey, which I've already used within the beak and some of the feathers here. Now 
Now there is like a circle of this grey right the way around here. And again I'll blend that in using the colour shaper this time. There you go, that's starting to take shape. Now I've noticed with the eye they have lots of little flecks of colour, so I'm just going to add some flecks with the yellow ochre and the orange. Lots of little flecks of orange here. So that's building up gradually. Right. Now, one thing that the eye definitely needs is some light. The light in the eye actually brings an animal's eye to life. I always put on pure white. I could put the pupil colour on first and then the white on top, but the white would then not be as bright. So I put the pupil on afterwards after I've added the highlight. Now, to add the final drama, we need some black. And the black will be for the pupil plus the surrounding eye area. I'm using a Conte stick rather than one of the pastels here to give myself more control. If you want to use a pastel pencil, you can also do exactly the same with your pencil. It's just that the, the pastels themselves are quite large to handle, and this is a lot easier to handle. Just giving that edge of dark here right the way around. And if you want to fine-tune that then, you can use a pastel pencil. go so that highlight shows up brings that bird alive so hopefully this bird here now looks like he's actually looking at something I think he's now looking menacing. Okay, well I think that bird's now alive, so for today I think that's the end of that demonstration. I hope you've enjoyed it. Amazing work there, fantastic blending and drawing skills and a great attention to detail, thanks for that Carol. But it's time for me to show you a few more of my simple tips to help develop your watercolour painting techniques. Now, a question I get asked all the time is colour mixing. How do I know which colours I need to do? How do I know which way to mix them round? 
A good way to start out with colour mixing is actually to use primary colours. Now, primary colours are red, yellow and blue. And these colours basically will pretty much mix any colour you want apart from black and white. Of course, there's many variations of red, yellows and blues. I've got two different colour triangles which I've prepared to show you an example of this. On this one, this is the brighter side of colour. So we've got some French ultramarine, lemon yellow and some cadmium red. On this one, this is the darker side. This is French ultramarine, alizarin crimson and some yellow ochre. So this will give us quite a nice variation in colour, which is great for landscapes more than anything else. So I've just got a size 6 brush, a little bit of water, and I'm going to pull down the blue from the blob. I'll do the same on this side as well. To about halfway, clean that brush off again. I'll do the same on this side, pull the blue down, and then pull it down on this side as well. So dragging the colour through, and then when we start to mix the red with it, the cadmium red, as the colours meet in the middle, we're starting to get purples and mauves and plum colours. So just by dragging those two colours together, you're creating quite a nice variation in colour tone. There's probably ten different colours there. Of course, I can do the same with the red moving over towards the yellow. So if I get the lemon yellow and pull that over, you're getting the oranges and the ambers coming through. And then we can do the same this way get the yellow, lemon yellow moving up to the blue and of course you're going to get greens. And you go right through dark green down to the light green. And then over this side we'll get the crimson, alizarin crimson, move it into the blue, give it a mixture and you can see that you're getting nice deep purples as opposed to the lighter purples on this side. And then of course we can do the same with the crimson, alizarin crimson from this corner, move it over towards the yellow ochre and then move the ochre over towards the red and you get in terracottas and a different orange compared to the brighter one. The yellow ochre moving over to the blue will give you a very dark green, almost like an olive green. But Something that was quite interesting as well, if I take a bit of the blue, put it in the centre, take a little bit of the red, put it in the centre, and a bit of the yellow and put it in the centre, mix the colours together, you will create a grey, which is a neutral grey, perfect for shadows. And of course you can do exactly the same on this side, so basically any three primary colours, red, yellow, blue, will give you greys, which is the perfect colour for painting shadows. And that's a great little exercise, folks, to practice, and it's a nice way of understanding how the three colours mix together. And it just gets you practising, get all the colours, have a bit of a doodle in the centre there, and see what you get. So there you have it, folks, a nice little exercise for you to try. Why not have a go yourself? And remember to show us how you get on by uploading examples of your work on the community section of the SIA website. And to do this, just visit sia.co.uk for details. Well, time for a little break now, but join us in part three when versatile SIA mixed media artist Alison Board returns to complete weaving a watercolour web in part two of today's Try Your Hand Up project. See you after the break.